in the eyes of others, possessing dozens of spiritual crystals was considered extremely impressive. However, in the Star Extreme sect, there were a staggering 100 million of them, all because the sect had one super prodigal spender. Meanwhile, at the base of the beast peak, Luo Wuming brought Yi Feng there, explaining that inside these seal caves were beasts of varying strengths and numbers. The further up one went, the stronger the beasts. Yi Feng, puzzled, asked, why seal them? Why not just kill them? Luo Wuming explained that these beasts played a significant role, providing life and death trials for the disciples. If disciples wish to leave the sect, they must challenge these sealed beasts. If they can't even defeat the sealed beasts, they're doomed in the outside world. Here, they still have a chance of survival. The outside world won't be as merciful. Upon hearing this, Yi Feng was eager to give it a try. He was going to the battlefield of life and death in a couple of days. Could he have a warm-up fight now? However, Luo Wuming declined. These beasts should be reserved for other disciples to train with. Given your strength, Yi Feng, even a few hundred beasts of the same realm would be a breeze for you. It would be a waste. Yi Feng persisted, expressing his desire to challenge a higher-ranked beast from the merging spirit realm. However, Luo Wuming pretended not to hear. What did you say? The weather is so nice today. It seems that Master's father will not pay attention to him anymore. Now, his prodigal score is only 2,810 points. He needed to make a significant move soon. A day had passed since Yi Feng's visit to the beast peak. Today, he had acquired the corpse of a purple thunder mad lion. Although he was unsure of the beast's ranking or how to process it, with his doubts, he approached his senior brother, Chen Haoyu. Senior brother, how should I handle this beast's body? Chen Haoyu explained that one could extract the essence blood from the beast using spiritual energy. However, the essence blood only benefits those who cultivate the body. Yi Feng inquired further, what constitutes body cultivation? Body cultivators use techniques to refine their bodies, absorbing the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, constantly evolving. Their combat power is terrifying, and the essence blood of beasts is their best cultivation resource. Chen Haoyu elucidated, with new questions, Yi Feng asked, what if we directly roast and eat the beast's body? Chen Haoyu looked at Yi Feng, baffled, and stared at him with a strange expression, not understanding where Yi Feng got such quirky ideas. Despite his confusion, Chen Haoyu explained, the more powerful the beast, the more challenging it is to extract its essence blood. If you directly roast and eat it, the power absorbed would likely be less than 1% of the essence blood. It's fine for lower realm beasts, but for powerful ones, not extracting the essence blood and eating it directly would be quite wasteful. Do we have body cultivators in our sect? Yi Feng asked curiously. Chen Haoyu replied, yes, fifth ancestral elder Chuyunchan is one. She is a body cultivator at the tribulation crossing realm. Just as Chen Haoyu wanted to gossip more about Chuyunchan's past, Yi Feng promptly left. He wasn't interested in listening to such lengthy stories. Watching Yi Feng leave, Chen Haoyu furrowed his brows, wondering if his junior really had the body of a high realm beast and if he was truly considering roasting it. Yi Feng then proceeded to the dueling arena. Upon seeing this, the surrounding disciples assumed he was here to challenge again. Some even lay down and surrender, thinking they stood no chance against him. But Yi Feng didn't plan on challenging. He jumped onto the stage and announced, let's not duel today. Help me slice some meat instead. I'll treat you all to a barbecue today. Saying this, under the astonished eyes of everyone, he took out the body of the purple thunder mad lion. The sheer size and weight of it immediately shattered the newly repaired arena. Witnessing the colossal carcass, the fellow disciples were utterly stupefied. Yi Feng then jumped atop the beast. Dear senior brothers and sisters, please help me slice it. I can't handle it alone. Hearing this, the crowd was thrilled. However, during the slicing, they encountered difficulties. The purple thunder mad lion was of such a high grade that their weapons couldn't pierce its defenses. Some weapons even broke upon impact, leaving the disciples almost in tears, mourning their precious, now broken weapons. Seeing this predicament, Yi Feng sought help from his system for powerful weapons. The system lent him a hundred daggers temporarily, but staring at the rusty, shabby-looking daggers, Yi Feng seriously doubted the system's intentions. Can these really cut through? He wondered. Nonetheless, with no other options, he approached his fellow disciples with a bag of worn-out daggers. Stop your attempts. Use my daggers to slice. Observing the incredibly old, battered daggers, everyone was skeptical. Will these actually work? But their doubts were soon put to rest when one disciple started slicing. The tough scales of the beast were like tofu under the dagger's edge. The dagger's efficiency was truly terrifying. Seeing this, Yi Feng finally smiled in satisfaction. But then he noticed a disciple trying out the dagger on his own body, making Yi Feng extremely frustrated. Can't you just focus on the beast's body? He lamented. But he had to admit, the daggers were deceptively powerful. If only I could squander my points on these, he wished. However, the system rejected this thought, reminding Yi Feng that the daggers were just on loan. They needed to be returned, or a hefty amount of his spendthrift points would be deducted. Yi Feng was speechless. This damn system is so stingy. It seemed he would have to collect them later. With the aid of the miraculous daggers, the crowd quickly dissected the purple thunder mad lion. The roasted meat was fragrant and tantalizing. It was like an ancient style bonfire feast. The disciples relished every bite.
great. After all, this was high-grade monster meat, a delicacy they might only taste once in their lives. At this moment, about 10 miles away from the Star Extreme set, a figure broke through the air. His name was Luo Kai, a muscular man boasting 8-pack ABS. He murmured, Luo Wuming, I'm here. It seemed they were old acquaintances. However, when he saw the active protective barrier of the Star Extreme set, Luo Kai was puzzled. Is the Star Extreme set in danger? But it didn't seem so. He was the only one in the vicinity. Nonetheless, he headed straight for the Nine Star Sword formation. Assuming it to be as it was in the past, he wanted to test its strength against his own body. But in the next moment, he was dumbfounded. What the hell? Completely caught off guard by the enhanced power of the Nine Star Sword formation. A baffled expression adorned his face as he wondered who could have upgraded the Nine Star Sword formation. Detecting the disturbance, Luo Wuming flew out, shouting, Luo Kai, have you gone mad? Can't you see our protective barrier is active? How dare you challenge it head on? After hearing Luo Wuming's teasing, Luo Kai was so angry. I come for you. Who knew that your Nine Star Sword formation has improved so much? Luo Wuming told him to stop talking nonsense. Hurry up and state your business. Seeing this, Luo Kai revealed his true purpose. He came to show off. This time he made a fortune in the Heavenly Dao battlefield. He earned as many as 80 top grade spiritual crystals. Luo Wuming thought it was no big deal. Is that all? I'm leaving first. Luo Kai was stunned. Is that your only reaction? Shouldn't you ask me for a dozen or so? Then Luo Kai seriously asked. Did your sect activate the defensive formation? Is there a strong enemy attacking? And who improved the sword formation to such a terrifying level? Luo Wuming casually replied. It's nothing. Recently, we just have too many spiritual crystals. We wanted to use up some of our stock. You should have felt the power of the sword formation. Even though its consumption increased tenfold, my star extreme sect can afford it. Hearing this, Luo Kai was so angry. You are showing off. How many spiritual crystals do you have now? You only upgraded a defensive formation. Look at you being so smug. Luo Wuming smiled slightly. It's not that many. Just a hundred million. That should last a few months. You look like you just came back from the Heavenly Dao battlefield. Anything else besides the spiritual crystals? On the surface, Luo Kai pretended to be calm and said, nothing much. Just wanted to have a drink and chat with you. But he was shocked inside. A hundred million? Luo Wuming has never lied to him about big matters. Which means a hundred million spiritual crystals is true. Later, Luo Kai I followed Luo Wuming to chat, but along the way, he smelled a delicious aroma. Suddenly, Luo Kai went crazy. He recognized the scent of the purple thunder mad lion. He then rushed towards the source of the aroma and witnessed the disciples feasting. Luo Kai was stunned. It really was the purple thunder mad lion. He couldn't believe it. Luo Wuming was also a bit surprised at this point. This purple thunder mad lion has at least survived nine thunder tribulations. It's a terrifying beast that could ascend to the upper realm at any time, and now it's being roasted and eaten. Luo Kai was very puzzled. What are your disciples doing? Then, after seeing what was being grilled, he immediately grabbed Luo Wuming and questioned him. You are roasting and eating such a powerful beast's flesh. When did your star extreme sect become so rich? Luo Wuming helplessly said. Rich? Not at all. It's definitely that prodigal Yi Feng's doing. Just then, Luo Kai suddenly saw a terrifying scene that made his heart skip a beat. A disciple, only at the Qi activation realm, held what appeared to be an ordinary black dagger. Yet he was effortlessly cutting through the scales covering the body of the purple thunder mad lion. At this moment, Luo Kai was truly shocked. It was one thing for these disciples to openly roast the purple thunder mad lion, but that dagger that sliced through the lion's scales as if they were tofu, what kind of divine weapon was that? My old friend, your sect feels so unfamiliar to me now. Luo Wuming was also stunned. He had no idea either. No, he must inform the five ancestral elders first. Then he sent a voice message to the five ancestral elders. Hurry up and come over. That Yi Feng kid is wasting resources again. And this time, it's the corpse of a purple thunder mad lion that survived nine thunder tribulations. He's roasting it for the disciples to eat. If you don't come now, it'll be gone. Luo Kai, confused, asked, Who is Yifeng? Why do you need to call the five ancestral elders? Can't you just deal with him directly? Luo Wuming sighed heavily. I wish I could handle it, but I can't. Not only is Yifeng the sixth core disciple of the sect, but he also contributed 100 million top grade spiritual crystals and enhanced the nine star sword formation. Now, he holds the position of honorary elder. Even I, Luo Wuming, have to address him as Elder Yi. Upon hearing the news, Chu Yunshan from the back mountain cried, and in the next moment, he was furiously shouting. Big brother, do you realize how important a beast that survived nine thunder tribulations is to me? Saying this, he rushed to the scene. Fortunately, he was stopped by the other ancestral elders in time. Impulsiveness is the devil, Luo Chanching said, puzzled. Isn't it obvious? Such a high-level beast corpse is naturally important, especially for a body cultivator like you. It's probably more important than an enlightenment pill. Chu Yunshan immediately lamented. Now in our sect, we have only one such beast corpse, and half of it has already been roasted and eaten by inner and outer sect disciples. Hearing this. The rest of the ancestral elders were also heartbroken. No wonder Old Fifth is so furious. If it were them, they would react the same way. Let's hurry up and stop them. Chu Yunshan admitted that he was powerless. It was that Yi Feng kid who brought it out. He wanted to share it with the disciples. We can't interfere. 
Luo Tianqing thought about it and agreed. After all, they had taken so many good things from Yifeng, they couldn't possibly take away the beast corpse too. This sentiment was echoed by the other ancestral elders. Besides, letting the disciples eat it would greatly benefit them. Luo Tianqing tried to console. It's just unfortunate for you, old fifth. Why don't we go over and have a taste? It's better to eat some than none at all. They hadn't tasted such a high-level beast before either. So, moments later, Luo Wuming and Luo Kai were already feasting on the dueling ground. The two were even competing to see who could eat faster. Upon seeing this, the arriving ancestral elders didn't know what to say. These two old geezers had even less shame than they did. Finally, as a drumbeat sounded, Luo Wuming ultimately lost. After all, with Luo Kai being a body cultivator, it wasn't surprising that he won. Thus, Luo Kai received cheers from the disciples. At this moment, Luo Wuming and others noticed the ancestral elders. They greeted them respectfully. After landing, the ancestral elders approached Yi Feng. Little Yi, why didn't you invite us old geezers to eat with you? Yi Feng replied, how could I not? If the ancestral elders are interested, then please join us. Luo Kai then teased, how can an old geezer like you be so unnoticed? And so, after an hour of digestion, the ancestral elders had a grand feast. Chu Yunshan even wanted to take away the skeleton. Seeing someone willing to clean up, Yi Feng was naturally pleased. Then Luo Wuming introduced his old friend Luo Kai to Yi Feng. He's a body cultivation expert in the fourth level of the tribulation crossing realm. However, Yi Feng was puzzled. Why was his master's father still calling him Elder Yi? It seemed they had no choice. After all, the great ancestral elder had made it clear. The two then exchanged respectful greetings. Only now, even Luo Kai started addressing him as Elder Yi. Yi Feng laughed, since you're a friend of my master's father, you're naturally my senior. Hearing this, Luo Kai felt like his brain was frying. Why do you call Luo Wuming master's father? While Luo Wuming addresses you as Elder, your relationship is so complicated. Luo Wuming explained, this kid is my daughter's senior disciple, so I'm his master's father. It's a long story. At this moment, Yi Feng received a reward for the lavish feast of the Purple Thunder Mad Lion. 200 drops of essence blood from the purple thunder mad lion that endured the nine heavenly Tao tribulations. Yi Feng wasn't quite familiar with the concept of nine heavenly Tao tribulations, so he asked his system for clarification. The system patiently explained that when a cultivator or a beast reaches the peak of the tribulation crossing realm's ninth level in the Xiantian continent and wishes to ascend to a higher realm, they must endure nine heavenly Tao tribulations, which are different from ordinary tribulations. Yi Feng then understood, so it's another level of strength after reaching the peak of the tribulation crossing crossing realm's ninth level. Luo Kai then excitedly approached and said, Thank you, nephew Yi Feng. Without you, I wouldn't have tasted such a precious beast. But I must say, you really wasted the essence blood of the purple thunder mad lion. Yi Feng was a bit dazed from Luo Kai's enthusiastic padding. He took out the recently awarded essence blood and asked, Senior, are you talking about this? Upon closer inspection, Luo Kai confirmed, Yes, this aura is right. This essence blood is refined from the purple thunder mad lion. Yi Feng offered to give them some of the essence blood, but mentioned he would keep some for his own pet dog. Luo Kai was confused. Dog? Is that a nickname for your friend? Luo Wuming explained. No, dog is not a person. It's just a regular stray dog. It just swallowed over 2009 pattern clear mysterious pills and is evolving into a beast. Luo Kai was taken aback. What? A regular stray dog gets such benefits? Luo Kai found it hard to believe. Yi Feng reassured him. It's really just a dog. Luo Kai was in disbelief, muttering, you must be joking. Seeing Luo Kai's state, Yi Feng excused himself and left. Luo Wuming, seeing this, wanted to take Luo Kai somewhere to give him an opportunity. Luo Kai snapped back to reality and followed, but he was still puzzled. What kind of opportunity can your sect possibly have? Back at Luo Wuming's residence, he took out a pill for Luo Kai. Luo Kai was suspicious, wondering if it was poison. Luo Wuming reassured, if you weren't my close buddy, I wouldn't offer this to you. He went on to explain, this is an enlightenment pill. I bet you've never seen one before. Luo Kai was dumbfounded. Is this for real? Luo Wuming replied, try it, and you'll know. You'll thank me. Without hesitation, Luo Kai swallowed the pill. In an instant, his mind began to whirl rapidly. He sat down cross-legged, entering a state of enlightenment. After 20 minutes, Luo Kai woke up, visibly satisfied. Luo Wuming said, told you, didn't I? That enlightenment pill was given by Yi Feng. Apart from the 70 he provided to the sect, he's keeping 20 to feed his dog. He went on to mention Xia Tianyu, who helps Yi Feng and receives nine leaf soul returning herbs. Ignoring auction houses, he joined Luo Wuming's daughter's star soul sect as an elder, and by Tianhong, sent to supervise his daughter, now completely stationed at star soul sect. After listening, Luo Kai Kai silently left. Luo Wuming was puzzled. We haven't had our drinks yet. Where are you going? Luo Kai was visibly upset. What's there to drink? Luo Wuming was bewildered. We're just chatting. Why are you angry? Luo Kai spoke somberly. I'm alone in this world. Besides you, I have no friends or family. I could have had a daughter like Luo Chinchue. Thinking he hit a sore spot, Luo Wuming prepared to apologize. But Luo Kai changed his tone. So you didn't tell me earlier about your daughter founding a sect. I've decided to join as an elder to find a place to call home. With that, he soared into the sky. Luo Wuming was livid. 
it. So you're also eyeing me Feng's opportunities? You really have no shame. Get back here. At Luo Kai's abrupt departure, Luo Wuming was absolutely furious. Who was it that said they'd never join any faction for life? Who claimed they loved freedom, wishing to settle down now? Ha, huh? I bet you're just setting your sights on Yifeng. Although Luo Wuming verbally ridiculed his old friend, truth be told, he also desired to join. If it weren't for his status as a master's father, he would have already become an elder at Star Soul Sect. Snapping back to reality, Luo Wuming remembered the matter of the demonic beast's essence. He must quickly inform the five ancestral elders. Meanwhile, Yi Feng, out of boredom, started singing, only to be interrupted by a forceful kick on his door from senior brother Chen Haoyu. Chen stormed in angrily questioning Yi Feng. Little junior brother, I knew you were extravagant, but this is pure madness. Yi Feng calmly responded, stay steady, don't panic. Look, my door's broken again. It turns out, Chen Haoyu had visited the scripture vault and found information about the purple thunder mad lion. He also got wind of Yi Feng's extravagant actions. Yi Feng nonchalantly said, I'm aware. Chen Haoyu was utterly defeated, realizing he couldn't reason with such a prodigal like Yi Feng. It seems he'll have to adjust his attitude, especially for when they get to the Star Soul Sect, where he might just die from frustration. Without even a goodbye, Chen Haoyu staggered away. Yi Feng was dumbfounded. He broke my door and just left like that? Unbelievable. My poor door. Finally, after patching up his door and preparing to sleep, the door was brutally kicked open once again, this time by fifth ancestral elder Chuyun Zhan. Yi Feng, are you asleep? But Yi Feng, resigned and anticipating the elder's intentions, didn't waste any words. He directly handed over ten drops of the demonic beast's essence as a token of respect. Chu Yun Zhan, with a hint of hesitation, accepted the essence, uttering apologetically, I'm so sorry for the intrusion. Elder Yi, I won't disturb your rest. If you need anything, do let me know. With that, he decisively excused himself and left. Yi Feng, staring at his shattered door, felt no desire to fix it anymore. Maybe I should just change courtyards, he mused. After shifting courtyards, Yi Feng finally enjoyed a good night's sleep. Come morning, it was time for new extravagant products to be refreshed. Opening his system, he saw mind calming incense, a bundle of 100 sticks, made from the 10,000 year dark god black tree. The fragrance it emitted when lit had a calming effect. Training under its influence could double the effectiveness, but rather than considering its impact on his training, Yi Feng wondered if it could help him sleep even better. Outside, Luo Wuming and the ancestral elders were staking out. Based on Luo Wuming's days of observations, Yi Feng always seemed to take out some extravagant items to splurge every morning. Back at Star Soul Sect, early in the morning, he'd fed his dog with underworld sword and tent fragments. Later, on the way to Star Extreme Sect, he casually threw away a high-quality spiritual stone. And then, there was yesterday's incident with the Purple Thunder Mad Lion, which also happened in the morning. Luo Wuming seriously suspected that if this prodigal didn't indulge in luxury every morning, his mood would be off for the whole day. The ancestral elders unanimously agreed. Sounds about right. Suddenly, Luo Wuming caught a whiff of a fragrance. For a split second, he was entranced. The next moment, the great ancestral elder dashed forward, recognizing the aroma as that of the mind-calming incense, and not the ordinary kind. With a loud bang, Yi Feng's door was obliterated yet again. As the incense burned beside him, a bewildered Yi Feng regained his senses and shouted, Do you all have a vendetta against doors? The great ancestral elder took a deep breath of the mind-calming incense, and, with an I knew it expression, looked content. Surrounded by the five ancestral elders and his master's father, Yi Feng was utterly confused. What's the meaning of this? Luo Chanching inquired, Yi Feng, what kind of spiritual wood is this mind-calming incense made from? Yi Feng casually responded, It's from the 10,000-year dark god Black Tree. Luo Chanching feigned calm, replying, Ah, the 10,000-year dark god Black Tree. Not bad, really quite good. But inside, he had already lost his mind. After all, it was 10,000 years old. Yi Feng looked at him with resignation. Are you sure it's just not bad? By that measure, the 10,000-year dark god Black Tree doesn't seem all that special. It doesn't even compare to the other luxurious items I had earlier. Seems like it's being looked down upon by the ancestral elders. Little did he know, Luo Chanching was just feigning indifference. This tree was incredibly precious. Watching Yi Feng light it stick by stick, Luo Chanching felt his heart shatter. Frustrated by the slow burn, Yi Feng even brought out a fire tray to burn them faster. Luo Wuming whispered, There are a hundred of them. Luo Chanching and the other ancestral elders were crestfallen. This was mind calming incense, and he was wasting it. The anxiety and heartbreak drove them crazy. Everyone was devastated. After using the fire tray to burn all 100 sticks, Yi Feng peacefully went to sleep. Luo Chanching maintained a cheery facade, but inside, he was raging. Such a wasteful boy. He burned a hundred mind calming incense sticks just to sleep. Does he want to infuriate us to death? The exasperated ancestral elders could only leave, venting their frustrations outside Yi Feng's courtyard. You can imagine the hundred words of complaints. After venting, Luo Chanching finally sighed in relief. The second ancestral elder lamented, forget the 10,000 year dark god black tree. I've never even seen a tree over 5,000 years old in the heavenly Dao battlefield. Luo Chanching added, moreover, I suspect those incenses were made from the tree.
tree's core. It's not merely about its age, but after all, it's Yi Feng's possession. Out of sight, out of mind, I won't be coming back. I can't fathom where this kid gets all these treasures, making us all so envious. Let's leave. While it's a boon for the sect to have Yi Feng, his wasteful habits are beyond words. With that, the ancestral elders resolve never to return. Seeing this, Luo Wuming tried to placate them. There's no need for such reactions. If we can't change it, why not just close our eyes and enjoy the ambience? Chu Yunshan immediately agreed. You're right. In an instant, the same ancestral elders who had vowed not to return, all gave Luo Wuming a thumbs up, saying, great idea. And just like that, despite their earlier words, several ancestral elders sat outside Yi Feng's courtyard, immersing themselves in meditation. Yi Feng woke up an hour later, incredibly excited. I had such a good sleep, and I've used up all the mind-calming incense. Perfect. With that, after completing his daily wasteful task, Yi Feng received another reward. 200 sticks of mind-calming incense made from the 10,000-year dark god black tree, which boasted intense fragrance. Yi Feng was dumbfounded. Is this damned system trying to play tricks on me? Can I get another reward? He was infuriated that the system had given him another 200 sticks of the mind-calming incense. Believing that even the great ancestral elders didn't value it, he felt the incense was undermining his reputation as a lavish spender. I might as well throw them away, he muttered, heading out to dispose of the incense. But when he saw the ancestral elders congregated outside his door, he was taken aback. What are you all doing here? Luo Chanching explained, true cultivators practice anywhere and everywhere. The highest state of cultivation is to follow one's heart. Luo Wuming discreetly gave him a thumbs up, impressed by the great ancestral elders' wisdom. Seizing the opportunity, Yi Feng decided to get the ancestral elders to deal with the mind-calming incense for him. In front of the great ancestral elder, he casually dropped the incense and retreated to his room. The ancestral elders were stunned, staring at the incense scattered on the ground. Luo Chanqing even felt as if he had been reduced to a beggar. This kid just dropped 200 sticks of mind-calming incense without a word. What's he trying to say? At this point, Luo Wuming seemed to realize the reason. Great ancestral elder, do you remember what you said in front of Yi Feng earlier? You mentioned that these mind-calming incenses were just not bad, and his expression changed right after that. Upon hearing this, Luo Chanqing recalled the incident. Indeed, that's what happened. Suddenly, a thought struck him. Could it be that? Luo Wuming explained. He might have felt that your assessment of the incense was too low. After hearing your words, he dismissed it as worthless junk. That's why he threw it at us, to deal with as we saw fit. Luo Chanqing, wanting to clarify the situation, knocked on Yi Feng's door, asking if they should handle the mind-calming incense for him. As expected, Yi Feng's voice responded, Thank you, great ancestral elder. Please get rid of that junk for me. Using it will only devalue me. Receiving the confirmation, Luo Chanqing's face broke into a mysterious smile and exclaimed, Guys, let's go. Later, back in the cave dwelling on the back mountain, he began distributing the mind-calming incense to the other ancestral elders, with each receiving 20 sticks. Luo Wuming looked smug, hinting, What about me? Where's my share? He expected to be rewarded. However, Luo Chanqing calmly looked at him and said, You get nothing. He then decisively threw Luo Wuming out. Luo Wuming was dumbfounded, thinking, We were all begging together, so why am I excluded? Even 10 sticks would do. Inside the dwelling, Chu Yunshan pulled out a beggar's outfit, suggesting, Brother, why don't we become beggars? Every morning, we can stake out Yi Feng's place. No matter what treasures he brings out, we'll claim they're mediocre. The word begging might sound odd, but if it means getting treasures like this every day, I'd happily be a beggar. The other ancestral elders agreed. Begging does seem like a quick path to riches. Luo Chanqing knew these guys too well. They might talk about becoming beggars, but in reality, they were just concerned about Yi Feng squandering valuable items. Luo Chanqing soon approached Luo Wuming outside the window, reminding him that Yi Feng would be heading to the Heavenly Dao battlefield the next day. You must ensure Yi Feng's safety, he instructed. Luo Wuming acknowledged the order, understood. I will personally escort Yi Feng to the Heavenly Dao teleportation tower. The following day, Yi Feng woke up in high spirits and checked his system window, eager to see his newest acquisitions. He noticed a 10,000 set of second class 9th rank Earth prisoner talisman, which could trap enemies in an earthen prison. To Yi Feng, this seemed intriguing, definitely more so than yesterday's mind calming incense. He decided not to flaunt it just yet. It might come in handy in the Heavenly Dao battlefield. Meanwhile, Luo Tianqing stealthily approached Yi Feng's residence. Today, the kid is off to the Heavenly Dao battlefield. I wonder if I can scrounge some benefits, he mused. This time, Luo Tianqing deliberately didn't inform the other ancestral elders. Begging, after all, was an embarrassing act. So as the eldest, he felt he should bear that shame alone. Unexpectedly, he bumped into the second ancestral elder, who even brought along a begging bowl. Luo Tianqing was dumbfounded. Old second, you're taking this a bit too far, aren't you? Why didn't I think of bringing a bowl? The second ancestral elder proposed. Big brother, how about this? If we get something today, we'll split it between the two of us. Luo Tianqing nodded in agreement. You truly are a good brother. Just then, he spotted another figure in the distance. Isn't that old third? He wondered. The third ancestral elder stepped forward awkwardly, holding a cracked bowl. Big brother, second brother, I hope you don't mind if I join in.
in, the three looked at each other, embarrassment evident on their faces. They hadn't expected to all have the same idea, but just as they were reconciling with this situation, a slender, elegant leg emerged from behind a screen, causing the trio to blush deeply. What kind of tactic is this? Their previous understandings shattered. To their astonishment, it was the fourth ancestral elder who, in an effort to beg for treasures, had even employed the seductive tactic of dressing up in a tantalizing manner. The appearance of the fourth ancestral elder in such a manner left the other elders in shock. Old fourth, please don't do this. We're terrified. The fourth ancestral elder appeared just as surprised, saying, I hadn't expected all my elder brothers to be here too. Taking in the situation, Luo Chanching scanned the surroundings, commenting, since old fourth is here, surely old fifth is around as well? The fourth ancestral elder responded, didn't he come early? From behind the courtyard, the fifth ancestral elder, Chu Yunchan, had been waiting for a while. He was even more professionally equipped for begging. Not only was he holding a broken bowl, but he was also dressed in tattered clothes. Upon seeing this, Luo Chanching exclaimed, Old Fifth, why are you going to such lengths? It's just begging, after all. At this point, Luo Wuming also stealthily approached, thinking, Yi Feng always oversleeps. Today, I need to ensure he wakes up early. But as he entered the courtyard, Luo Wuming was completely baffled by the sight of the ancestral elders in such a state. The fourth ancestral elder greeted him coyly, Little Luo has arrived too. Chu Yunshan even suggested, Do you want a bowl as well? Luo Wuming felt like he was losing his mind. Are these really the ancestral elders I know? He quickly retreated, pretending he saw nothing. Moments later, Yi Feng emerged, and upon seeing the spectacle, a loud what the hell escaped his lips. He was startled by the bizarre behavior of the ancestral elders. Observing their broken bowls, a myriad of expressions crossed his face. What on earth are the ancestral elders up to? Are they trying to test their emotional resilience? And in my courtyard, of all places, do they want me to judge who's the best beggar? As Yi Feng's gaze moved from the youthful fourth ancestral elder to the beggar styled fifth ancestral elder, and then to the calm and composed great ancestral elder, he finally settled on Chu Yunshan. In front of him, he placed ten drops of great demon fairy blood in his bowl. Yi Feng was so moved by his own generosity that tears welled up in his eyes. I even helped in choosing the best beggar, and now I've even donated from my own pocket. Where can you find such a generous disciple like me? Soon after, he went looking for his master's father. On the other hand, Chu Yunshan was extremely pleased with himself and burst into triumphant laughter. I knew this method would work. However, just then, a large hand grabbed him. The other ancestral elders, with mischievous grins, stared at him. Old Fifth, we share both the good times and the bad. We beg together, so you can't just run off with the loot. Chu Yunshan sighed in frustration. If he had known this would happen, he would have made his escape earlier. At this moment, Yi Feng arrived at the main hall of the sect. Seeing him, Luo Wuming asked if he had encountered the ancestral elders. Yi Feng innocently replied, I did see them. True to their stature as powerful beings, they are cultivating their minds and spirits by enduring the trials of a beggar's life. They didn't say anything, but I understood their intentions. That's why I gave the most pitiful-looking fifth ancestral elder ten drops of great demon fairy blood. Upon hearing this, Luo Wuming almost choked on his own spit. Cultivating their minds by pretending to be beggars, they were actually begging from you. Who told you to have so many treasures? By indulging them this way, you'll only encourage their eccentricities even more. He sighed deeply but chose not to reveal the truth to Yi Feng. He no longer cared about the direction things were taking. After all, it was all in good fun. Yi Feng, impatiently, then asked, Master, are the other disciples ready? Where are we heading to the Heavenly Dao Battlefield's teleportation tower? Luo Wuming, upon hearing this, drew out his flying sword and declared, It's just the two of us. Let's set out now. With that, he and Yi Feng soared away on the sword. The ancestral elders, seeing this, felt a pang of regret. The kid's only been here for a few days, but we'll miss him. He probably won't return to the Star Extreme sect, and will go directly to the Star Soul sect instead. The fourth ancestral elder then proposed, should we also head to the Star Soul sect? After all, the Star Extreme sect now has a constantly active protective formation. Luo Chanching was utterly exasperated by the elders. Have you no shame? Not only did you beg, but now you want to chase after him to the Star Soul sect? Look at Old Fifth, how pragmatic he is. However, Chu Yunshan was even more audacious, having already packed up and ready to depart for the Star Soul sect immediately. Elder brother, I leave the Star Extreme sect in your hands. I'm truly grateful. This act finally pushed Luo Chanching over the edge, releasing a terrifying aura. He roared, all of you, stay right here in our sect. None of you are going to the Star Soul sect. Those who defy me will bear the consequences. Seeing this outburst, the ancestral elders were genuinely startled. It seemed they had taken their games a bit too far. While flying, Yi Feng expressed his confusion. It seems rather quiet along the way. I haven't seen any other cultivators or beasts. It's very different from what I've seen in the Star Soul sect. Luo Wuming explained, it's possible that the nearby cultivators have killed them all for practice. After all, the beasts of the Heavenly Dao battlefield are several times stronger than regular ones. A beast from the Heavenly Dao battlefield can easily defeat several normal beasts, and the same goes for cultivators. As for not encountering any cultivators, it's possible given the 
the vastness of the Xientian continent. However, just as he finished speaking, they were confronted by a stunning red-haired beauty blocking their path. Could the two of you entertain me for a bit? She flirtatiously asked. Luo Wuming's face turned serious. She's a powerful demon. I'll hold her off. Yi Feng. You run. The next moment, the alluring demoness voice chimed in. Don't go. Stay and keep me company. She then launched an attack on the two of them. The demoness swiftly restrained both men. Luo Wuming, looking grave, remarked, as expected, she possesses the power of the ninth layer of the tribulation crossing realm. The demoness then proposed, how about a fun trade? If you present something that piques my interest, I'll let you both go. Not trusting the promises of demons, Luo Wuming braced himself to fight back. However, just as he was about to act, countless drops of great demon fairy blood flew from behind him, courtesy of Yi Feng. The sight of the scattered great demon fairy blood left the demoness stunned. Furious, Luo Wuming turned to Yi Feng. Have you lost your mind? This is merely a trick she's using to play with us. By showing such a treasure, she's even less likely to let us go. Yi Feng, unfazed, replied with a smirk, it would be best if she tries to deceive us. I will cut her down myself then. It's just a beast. No need to worry. Luo Wuming looked at Yi Feng incredulously. Do you have a trump card up your sleeve? The demoness, in the meantime, appeared utterly perplexed. If she wasn't mistaken, this blood belonged to a powerful demon that had survived nine heavenly Dao thunder tribulations. She had only survived two such tribulations herself. How could these two seemingly insignificant figures possess such treasures? They must have a powerful backing. Realizing she was outmatched, the demoness accepted the blood and true to her word, let them go. Luo Wuming quickly prepared to leave with Yi Feng, but Yi Feng hesitated. We finally encounter a powerful beast. How can we leave without witnessing the might of a great demon? Luo Wuming was on the verge of exploding. Would you please stop provoking her? Yi Feng then took out 50 drops of great demon fairy blood, threatening, if you kill me, these will be yours. Luo Wuming felt utterly disheartened, thinking, what on earth is he thinking? What Yi Feng was thinking was, I've never faced real danger, so I haven't had a chance to summon my system's godly wealthy guard squad. Now that we've encountered this demoness, it's the perfect opportunity. He continued to tempt the demoness. This is great demon fairy blood. Aren't you tempted? The demoness was getting increasingly nervous. Facing such a formidable creature, yet still being this calm, meant that this young man was no ordinary person. There must be a terrifying power protecting him nearby. She realized that if she took action, she would be doomed. With that thought, she immediately transformed, revealing her true form, a mantis demon. Seeing this, Yi Feng was amazed. This creature looks so cool. Luo Wuming explained, this is the bloodthirsty mantis. It grows stronger with a constant supply of potent blood. It's a very formidable and tricky creature to handle. Having shown her true form, the demoness promptly fled, disregarding Yi Feng's intentions completely. Once at a safe distance, looking at the great demon fairy blood in her grasp, she pondered, was I too cautious? What if they just happened to stumble upon the great demon fairy blood? After all, it seems unlikely they could handle a demon of this level. Shrugging off her concerns, she placed the great demon fairy blood into her chest, thinking, at least I came out ahead this time, no point in dwelling on it. However, just then, Yi Feng, riding on Luo Wuming, came chasing after her. Seeing this, the demoness was dumbfounded. Yi Feng urged his master's father to speed up, even taking out a spiritual stone without hesitation to recharge him. Luo Wuming was equally enthusiastic, restoring his energy and speeding up once more. The demoness was now on the verge of tears, exclaiming, are you both out of your minds? I already let you go, why are you chasing me again? Yi Feng shouted angrily, monster, don't run, let's have a real fight. If I lose, you can do as you wish with me. But if you lose, you'll become my battle pet. The demoness was terrified and immediately tried to flee faster, not bothering about Yi Feng's challenge. She even threw back the great demon fairy blood, hoping to get him to stop chasing her. At this moment, Luo Wuming said, I can't catch up to her, let's just let it go. However, Yi Feng wasn't willing to give up so easily and asked his master's father to throw him towards the demoness. Reluctantly, Luo Wuming agreed and, with a powerful toss, sent Yi Feng flying forward. At this speed, in a blink of an eye, Yi Feng was right behind the demoness. The demoness was startled again and began to swing her scythe in desperation, asking Yi Feng to stay away. However, the system judged Yi Feng to be in a life-threatening situation. The next moment, the sky seemed to tear apart, leaving both Luo Wuming and the demoness staring in shock. From the crack, a figure emerged, tearing through the space. A powerful and robust man stepped out, commenting, this place sure is noisy. At this moment, the imposing godly wealthy guard squad finally made their appearance. Upon arrival, he reported to Yi Feng, Master, I apologize for the delay. Please forgive me. Yi Feng, who was holding on to the demoness, said, it's alright, you came just in time. The guard then stabilized the surrounding space, allowing Yi Feng to stand securely in the air. Yi Feng asked, are you a member of the godly wealthy guard squad? Is it just you? The guard respectfully explained, for the current threat, I alone am sufficient. The guard squad consists of thousands, and the number dispatched varies based on the danger you're in. The guard then glared menacingly at the demoness and asked, Master, do you wish for me to eliminate this threat? The demoness hastily begged for mercy, saying, Boss, I was wrong. Upon seeing the situation, 
situation, Li Feng chose not to harm the demoness. After witnessing the guard's capabilities, he dismissed him, saying, If she harbors any intent to kill, please come again. The guard bowed respectfully, replying, It's an honor to serve you, master, before departing. With a smirk, Yi Feng turned to the demoness and said, Now, you have two choices, become my battle pet or die. Without hesitation, the demoness knelt down, proclaiming, Master, I will obey your every command. At that moment, a contract materialized. Yi Feng couldn't understand a single word written in its arcane script. Luo Wuming explained, This is the heavenly Dao blood pact. If you drop your blood on it, you'll gain complete control over the demon. Looking at the pitiful and blushing demoness, Yi Feng decisively bit his finger and let his blood drop onto the contract. He thought, trading a drop of blood for a battle pet is such a great deal. The heavenly Dao blood pact resonated greatly after absorbing the blood. The demoness felt as if she were on fire, her body trembling uncontrollably. After enduring this torment, she was successfully subdued by Yi Feng. Approaching her with concern, Yi Feng said, From now on, I am your master. My name is Yi Feng. The demoness blushed even deeper at this. Now, Luo Wuming no longer needed to be the driver, as the two mounted the demoness mount. Luo Wuming asked Yi Feng, I know you come from the higher realms, but who exactly are you? Unsure of how to explain, Yi Feng said, All you need to know, master's father, is that I am the direct disciple of the supreme master. Hearing this, Luo Wuming didn't press further and burst into laughter, exclaiming that Luo Chenshui indeed had an excellent disciple. Yi Feng, witnessing this reaction, felt mixed emotions, realizing that his master's father didn't mind his true identity after all. As the sun set, Yi Feng and his group arrived at the Heavenly Dao Battlefield Teleportation Tower. The place was packed with people. Luo Wuming explained that even though the Heavenly Dao Battlefield was dangerous, each realm was an independent space, which reassured many. Because of this, countless individuals flocked to the battlefield in search of opportunities and resources. Hearing this, Yi Feng figured that given his ability to take on 200 of his senior brothers, he must be considered quite outstanding here. To ensure his safety, he inquired if the godly wealthy guard squad could appear within the heavenly Dao battlefield. The system assured him they could, as the guard squad wasn't bound by the battlefield's rules. Reassured, Yi Feng smirked, thinking, this system is truly impressive. Now I can explore freely. Soon after, Yi Feng decided to enter the battlefield alone, leaving his newly subdued little blood to escort his master's father back to the sect. At this, Luo Wuming was ecstatic. He was eager to report to the elders that a demon who had withstood two heavenly Dao Thunder tribulations had joined their sect. Surely, the Star Extreme sect would rise in prominence now. Before long, Yi Feng entered the heavenly Dao battlefield. However, the desolation in front of him differed from his expectations. Suddenly, he heard a voice from a nearby tree. Brother, is this your first time in the heavenly Dao battlefield? Yi Feng responded, Yes, it's my first time. A chubby individual named Li Fei then jumped down and asked about Yi Feng's capabilities, offering to guide him as he was familiar with the battlefield. Yi Feng calmly replied that he was at the peak of the Qi activation realm's ninth stage. The two stared at each other for a moment and then, as if they were old friends, decided to team up. Li Fei mused to himself, Are you naive or just simple? You answer everything so directly. You must have a trump card to be so fearless. Yi Feng was well aware that this fellow, Li Fei, was trying to take advantage of him. However, with the guard squad at his beck and call, he wasn't the least bit concerned about his safety and was in the mood for some fun. Though, thinking about it, Yi Feng realized that since his transmigration, he hadn't killed anyone, which felt quite uncharacteristic for a typical transmigrator. Li Fei, buzzing with excitement, proposed, How about this? I'll lead the way, and whatever resources we find, we'll split 50-50. Yi Feng, equally thrilled, agreed immediately. Li Fei thought to himself, I need to test his strength. If he's strong, we can team up. If he's weak, well, he can't blame me for what happens next. Li Fei then led Yi Feng to a pack of ironbacked rats to test the strength. There were about 300 of these rats, and their strength ranged from the 5th to the 8th stage of the Qi activation realm. Let's see what you've got, Li Fei challenged. With a sly grin, Yi Feng pulled out his earth prisoner talisman, a major splurge on his part. The sky full of talismans dumbfounded Li Fei. What the hell, why do you have so many talismans? And they're all second grade, ninth rank. Yi Feng looked back, puzzled. Why? To make things easier, of course. This move left Li Fei in a daze. At that moment, the iron-backed rats were in the middle of what seemed like a concert. The next second, they were bombarded by a rain of talismans, specifically Yi Feng's earth prisoner talismans. In an instant, the rats were immobilized. Yi Feng then delivered the finishing blow, wiping them out one by one as if playing a game of whack-a-mole. The scene left Li Fei utterly baffled. Is this for real? You used 300 expensive talismans just to kill iron-backed rats. Are you hunting monsters or just squandering money? After clearing out the rats, Yi Feng turned to Li Fei. So, brotherly, what do you think of my strength now? Li Fei was utterly flabbergasted. Ignoring Yi Feng's power for a moment, just the earth prisoner talisman alone was something he couldn't break without exerting his full strength. Are you here to show off? Why the excessive display of wealth? Li Fei muttered. As Yi Feng prepared to leave, Li Fei pointed to the demon cores scattered on the ground. Aren't you taking these cores? Even though they're from low 
low tier monsters, they're still valuable. Yi Feng looks surprised. Brotherly, do you really lack money that much? In that case, I'll leave these for you. Li Fei was dumbstruck. He was convinced Yi Feng was just putting on an act. You come to the Heavenly Dao battlefield, and you don't want resources? I want to see how long you'll keep up the charade. Just then, a figure zoomed towards them. You two brats, hand over the iron backed rat corpses if you don't want to die. Yi Feng retorted nonchalantly, Which gang do you hail from? Daring to mess with me? Finally, someone trying to rob me. I'll deal with you, punk. Yi Feng then unleashed another barrage of Earth prisoner talismans. The robber was bewildered. Didn't you just use hundreds? How do you still have so many? But before he could react, he was trapped. After a struggle, the robber managed to break the last talisman. But as soon as he did, he saw Yi Feng clutching dozens more, smiling menacingly at him. Before he knew it, he was trapped once again. Li Fei felt a wave of relief wash over him, glad that he hadn't provoked Yi Feng. Otherwise, he'd be the one trapped now. Eventually, the robber broke free again, yelling, relying on external tools is no measure of skill. If you're a real man, let me out, and we'll fight on equal terms. Yet, in response, Yi Feng thrust a sword right at him. You, a mere lowlife, are not worthy of facing me, Yi Feng said with unabashed arrogance. Seeing Yi Feng's suave demeanor, Li Fei was truly shaken. Damn, this guy's ruthless. I was fooled by him earlier. I thought he was an innocent and kind person, but this was all a facade. The realization made Li Fei's heart race in fear. At that moment, Yi Feng was incredibly hospitable, even handing over a bunch of Earth prisoner talismans to Li Fei, telling him to use them whenever he ran into trouble. Looking at the talismans in his hand, Li Fei finally understood that Yi Feng wasn't just pretending to be rich, he was genuinely wealthy. It was no wonder he didn't value monster corpses. The guy just didn't care about money. Yi Feng remembered that the new day was only five hours away, but he still had over 9,000 talismans left. He had to use them all up quickly. Consequently, under their thoughtless throwing of talismans, they finally exhausted all of them, earning Yi Feng 1,000 points and 100 enlightenment pills. Exhausted, Yi Feng collapsed to the ground. It's so tiring to spend so freely. At that moment, Li Fei was smiling from ear to ear. He was truly grateful for Yi Feng's talismans. The profit he made in just one night wasn't even 1 20th of what he got from using the talismans. Li Fei surmised that Yi Feng must be a core disciple of a major sect and had mentally classified him as someone not to mess with. Regaining his composure, Yi Feng said, Little Fei, I won't let you work for free. Take this enlightenment pill and consume it. I'll protect you while you meditate. Li Fei looked at the pill in his hand, a dubious expression on his face. Is this a poisonous pill? But if I don't consume it, would this lavish guy attack me with a treasure? After some consideration, Li Fei decided to swallow the pill. After all, there was no benefit for Yi Feng to harm him, and if Yi Feng wanted him dead, he wouldn't need to be so elaborate. Clearly, Li Fei was no match for Yi Feng. The moment he swallowed the pill, Li Fei froze. A clear, insightful feeling washed over him, prompting him to immediately sit cross-legged and begin the process of enlightenment. Yi Feng protected him, ensuring no harm came his way. Truthfully, had Yi Feng not received so many enlightenment pills as a reward, he wouldn't have given Li Fei one. After all, he had plans to save some for his pet dog. If the dog knew of his intentions, it would surely decline the offer, not wanting the pill. After 20 minutes, Li Fei's enlightenment came to an end. Li Fei was a bit frustrated, annoyed at himself for wasting the first two minutes in a daze. He then promptly knelt down and expressed his gratitude to Yi Feng, promising to remember this favor and help out if Yi Feng ever needed anything in the future. Curious, Yi Feng asked, which world do you come from? Li Fei replied that he hailed from the Heavenly Fire Realm. Yi Feng was taken aback. He had never heard of the Heavenly Fire Realm. He shared that he came from the mysterious Heaven Realm. Li Fei gave an embarrassed smile. It seems our Heavenly Fire Realm isn't that well known. He had initially hoped that maybe they came from the same place, making it easier to bond. But, as life would have it, there weren't so many coincidences. After some time, the duo's attention was captured by some shimmering objects in the vicinity. Li Fei, who had seen much of the world, immediately took out his pickaxe, exclaiming excitedly, Brother Yi, we're in luck. These are low-grade spiritual crystals. Looks like there are about 200 here. Li Fei enthusiastically started mining. Yi Feng looked puzzled. That's it, he decided to give all the crystals to Li Fei. Li Fei, with a confused expression, asked, Brother Yi, you don't want anything? Then why did you come to the Heavenly Dao battlefield? With a nonchalant gesture, Yi Feng replied, just for fun and to splurge. I have lots of precious items. The Heavenly Dao battlefield doesn't really attract me. Seeing Yi Feng's casual demeanor, Li Fei had the urge to give him a good punch. Suddenly, an idea struck him. Brother Yi, if you're looking to splurge, why not go to the Heavenly Dao city? Yi Feng, looking intrigued, asked, what's the Heavenly Dao city? Li Fei began explaining, Heavenly Dao city is the most unique place in the Heavenly Dao battlefield. It's filled with countless treasures, resources, and cultivation techniques. If you have the money, you can buy anything there. It's truly a paradise for spendthrifts, and the city is governed by the laws of the Heavenly Dao, ensuring that there are no conflicts or robberies. However, to enter the Heavenly Dao city, one needed a Heavenly Dao token. I happen to have one, but it only grants access to the city for a day. Curious, Yi Feng inquired, how did you obtain it? Li Fei explained, I found it by chance in some ruins. Even though 
I want to go. Everything in Heavenly Dao City is too expensive. I'd simply be wasting my limited resources there. Since you've given me the enlightenment pill, and I don't know if we'll meet again, I'd like to offer this Heavenly Dao token as a token of my gratitude. Yi Feng asked him to wait a moment, saying, I'm not someone who takes without giving. Here's a bottle of enlightenment pills for you. This unexpected boon left Li Fei ecstatic. He showered Yi Feng with praise. Subsequently, Yi Feng dripped his blood onto the token. Suddenly, a cloud of smoke enveloped him, taking him by surprise. With a loud pop, he vanished. Li Fei, looking quite pleased with himself, thought about how he'd traded a token, which was useless to him, for 13 enlightenment pills. What a great deal! Elsewhere, Yi Feng appeared out of thin air. When he took in his surroundings, he was astounded. The so-called Heavenly Dao City resembled a modern city. If not for the ancient style clothing of the people around, Yi Feng would have thought he'd returned to his ancestral planet. He felt elated, as this modern-looking Heavenly Dao City felt like home. However, his Qi activation realm cultivation seemed to be looked down upon by the practitioners around him. They wondered what use a Qi activation realm cultivator would have in such a place. Suddenly, Yi Feng heard an argument nearby. Turning, he saw two practitioners who looked strikingly like super scions from another world, bickering. Yi Feng was confused. Wasn't the Heavenly Dao City supposed to be free from conflicts? A nearby man explained, they aren't actually fighting, they're just having a heated argument. Looking at the man, who leaned against a sedan, Yi Feng asked, who might you be? The man grinned, need a ride? Starting at five Heavenly Dao points, Yi Feng realized, so you're a cab driver. Yi Feng, perplexed, inquired, what are these Heavenly Dao points? The driver looked exasperated, you don't know what Heavenly Dao points are? Are you new here? What a waste of my time. With that, he drove off. Annoyed, Yi Feng muttered, was just asking a simple question, why so temperamental? He then headed to the Heavenly Dao bank, assuming it's where he could exchange for Heavenly Dao points. Upon entering, he was warmly greeted. Yi Feng asked if they had Heavenly Dao points. A staff member named Money Tiger instantly recognized Yi Feng as a newcomer but didn't look down on him. He patiently explained that in Heavenly Dao City, one top grade spiritual crystal can be exchanged for a Heavenly Dao point and all expenses in the city require these points. Yi Feng was surprised. That's cheap. Why didn't you say so earlier? Noticing Money Tiger's name tag, he saw that the attendant was from the water spirit realm and was a powerful practitioner of the tribulation crossing realm. Money Tiger felt a bit awkward. A cultivator of the tribulation crossing realm serving a Qi activation realm newcomer might be laughable to others. However, working here allowed him to earn heavenly Dao points, and working hours didn't count against the duration of his heavenly Dao token, making it acceptable. Yi Feng, puzzled, remarked, aren't you wasting your time here then? Money Tiger looked distressed. Do you even know how to speak properly? Unaware of the offense his words may have caused, Yi Feng prodded further, don't you need to cultivate, and are spiritual crystals hard to obtain in the heavenly Dao battlefield? His words felt like three consecutive blows, leaving Money Tiger speechless. Although irritated, Money Tiger suppressed his anger, intending to send Yi Feng away as soon as possible. However, Yi Feng halted him, wait a moment, Money Tiger braced himself, expecting trouble. To his astonishment, Yi Feng pulled out a ring containing a staggering 100 million top grade spiritual crystals, asking him to exchange them all for heavenly Dao points. Money Tiger's eyes widened in disbelief and greed. Instantly, his demeanor changed, and he eagerly began the exchange process. Yi Feng mused, this world is getting more and more interesting. I should get a few more heavenly Dao tokens next time and bring my beautiful master here to enjoy the city. Imagining the pairing of handsome men and beautiful women, he envisioned a delightful scene. Just then, Money Tiger zipped over in a flash, holding a processed card in his hand. The speed stunned Yi Feng, trying to leave a lasting impression on Yi Feng, whom he perceived as a god of wealth. Money Tiger offered to answer any questions Yi Feng might have. However, Yi Feng, uninterested, responded, no need, I see you're busy, so I won't bother you. Money Tiger was filled with regret, internally crying out, don't leave, god of wealth. Afterwards, Yi Feng headed to an entertainment spot. The modern architecture around him seamlessly blended with the surroundings. He felt that Heavenly Dao City might have been the work of a traveler or someone from another world. Given its modern vibe, coming across a machine that promised merchandise of a popular idol upon participation, Yi Feng was tempted, but the moment he decided to participate, a rift suddenly opened behind him, sucking him in. The only thing left in his spot was a piece of merchandise on the ground. It turned out that Yi Feng's Heavenly Dao token had expired, sending him back to his original location in the Heavenly Dao battlefield. Feeling annoyed, Yi Feng exclaimed, it was supposed to last a day. Li Fei, you deceiving bastard, why did it only last half a day? Damn it, I didn't even get my merchandise. Recalling Li Fei's mention that the token was found in some ruins, Yi Feng deduced that such tokens could probably only be found there. He resolved to settle the score with Li Fei if they ever met again. Meanwhile, at another location, Li Fei sneezed, completely unaware he was being cursed by Yi Feng. At the entrance of the Star Extreme set, an elder dressed in a red robe stood, gazing at the activated Nine Star Sword formation with amazement. He couldn't understand why the Star Extreme sect had its sect protecting formation activated in broad daylight. Before long, Luo Tianxin approached, seeing the red 
red-robed elder. He laughed. You old fellow, what brings you here? Hearing Luo Chanching's query, the red-robed elder sighed deeply, struggling to find the words to answer. For thirty full years, he had been in the Heavenly Dao battlefield, and had unexpectedly obtained a Heavenly Dao token. After using it, he worked in the Heavenly Dao city for those thirty years. Through extreme thriftiness, he finally purchased two defensive artifacts capable of withstanding the Heavenly Dao Thunder Tribulation. However, upon returning to the Heavenly Dao battlefield, he found that only a second had passed in the outside world. He had come to explain this unbelievable occurrence to his old friend, but the story was so bizarre, he wasn't sure how to begin. Luo Chanching gestured for him to enter, saying, Come in, stop dawdling outside. As they were entering, Bai Gang seemed to sense something and asked Luo Chanching, The spiritual crystals your sect uses to maintain its protective array, are they top grade spiritual crystals? Seeing the astonishment on Bai Gang's face, Luo Chanching wore a smug expression, Correct, we use top grade spiritual crystals to sustain the sect's protective formation. I bet you've never seen any. I'll give you a few later. Bai Gang, enraged, landed a punch on Luo Chanching. Have you gone mad? We've been in the Heavenly Dao battlefield for so many years. Have you ever come across a top grade spiritual crystal? Even low quality spiritual crystals are sufficient. How could you waste the top grade ones? Do you even know their true value? Luo Chanching, rubbing his swelling cheek, replied defensively. Was it necessary to be so aggressive? Bai Gang then revealed the two defensive treasures. These two mini towers are incredibly powerful defensive artifacts. Each one can withstand a Heavenly Dao Thunder Tribulation. With them, I can endure up to the seventh Heavenly Dao Thunder Tribulation. This powerful treasure cost me over three million top-grade spiritual crystals. However, Luo Chanching, familiar with Xian Tian Continent, dismissed his claims. Where in the world is there an artifact that can withstand the Heavenly Dao Thunder Tribulation? That's pure nonsense. Hearing this, Bai Gang slapped Luo Chanching again. What do you know? Do you even know that in the Heavenly Dao Battlefield, there's an item called the Heavenly Dao Token? With it, you can enter the mysterious Heavenly Dao City. There, as long as you have top grade spiritual crystals, you're king. Even those on the verge of ascension have to bow and scrape before you. Luo Chanching, somewhat in disbelief, replied, having spent numerous years in the Heavenly Dao battlefield himself. So, in Heavenly Dao City, top grade spiritual crystals are the common currency? Bai Gang confirmed, that's right. If you don't have top grade spiritual crystals, you can work there. I worked in that city for a full 30 years to earn just over 3 million top grade spiritual crystals. And when I returned, only a second had passed in the outside world. Thinking of his hard labor days in the Heavenly Dao City, Bai Gang couldn't help but shed tears. Hearing the certain tone of his old friend, Luo Chanching immediately packed up the remaining 90 million plus top grade spiritual crystals from his sect and asked Bai Gang to accompany him, intending to splurge in Heavenly Dao City. But Bai Gang said, It's not possible. You need the Heavenly Dao token to enter. Luo Chanching hadn't expected this twist, lamenting, So much money and nowhere to spend. What a loss. What should I do with these 90 million spiritual crystals? Upon hearing this, Bai Gang exclaimed, What the hell? Where did you get so many top grade spiritual crystals from? Meanwhile, in the Heavenly Dao battlefield, Li Fei was strolling along. For some reason, he felt like he was hearing things. Why did it sound like Yi Feng's voice? Just then, a loud call of Li Fei echoed, confirming to Li Fei that it was Yi Feng calling out to him. Turning around, he saw Yi Feng rushing towards him. Li Fei greeted with a big smile, Brother Yi, I've missed you so much. However, Yi Feng's expression was filled with anger. Good, stand right there and wait for me. Li Fei was puzzled. What's going on? I don't think I've offended Brother Yi. Unaware of the impending danger, Li Fei greeted Yi Feng with joy, only to be met with a thrusting sword. Thanks to his agility despite his size, he managed to dodge it. Confused, he asked, why are you doing this? Weren't we sworn brothers who've been through life and death together? Yi Feng, seething with rage, shouted, you fatso, I've been looking for you for ages. How dare you deceive me? The heavenly Dao token only lasted for half a day. As Li Fei dodged and evaded, he tried to explain to Yi Feng, I really didn't know it would only last half a day. When I found the ancient ruins, there were dead bodies everywhere. Only one severe wounded man was still alive, and he was tightly holding the Heavenly Dao token, Li Fei paused, a hint of embarrassment on his face. I used some, unsavory methods to extract information about Heavenly Dao City from him and took the Heavenly Dao token. Either he lied to me, or he believed all Heavenly Dao tokens last a day. Hearing Li Fei's thorough explanation, Yi Feng finally halted his attack. Fine, I'll trust you this once, you chubby rascal. Curious, Li Fei inquired, Brother Yi, what did you do during that half day? What kind of place is Heavenly Dao City? Instead of answering immediately, Yi Feng posed another question. Does your realm have technology? Scratching his head, Li Fei was completely baffled by the term. Since you don't know what technology is, it's hard for me to explain certain things to you. But remember this. If you ever want to go to Heavenly Dao City, keep your top grade spiritual crystals. They are extremely important there, and it must be top grade. Just then, Yi Feng noticed that today's luxury items had been refreshed. It was Death Sword Intent Fragment. 10,000 pieces. Another Sword Intent Fragment? If only Doggy were here. As he mused, Yi Feng suddenly turned to Li Fei. Casually asking, Are you a sword cultivator? 
Li Fei denied. I don't want to be a sword cultivator. They have it tough, practicing with their swords all day long. Hearing this, Yi Feng broke into a grin. You don't like sword cultivation, huh? Seeing the odd glint in Yi Feng's eyes and his airy smile, Li Fei felt a wave of unease and swallowed hard. Recognizing the fragments in Yi Feng's hand, he deduced his intentions, leading to a comical chase. Don't run, Yi Feng shouted, and the scene felt oddly familiar. Brother Yi, please don't do this. I really don't want to be a sword cultivator, Li Fei protested, but Yi Feng persistently fed Li Fei one death sword intent fragment after another. Li Fei felt numb. He really didn't want to be a sword cultivator, but he didn't dare to resist, letting Yi Feng continue the feeding. Finally, after the last fragment was assimilated, Yi Feng has spent all his extravagant purchases for today. He had accumulated over 5,800 spendthrift points. Sweating profusely, Li Fei said, Brother Yi, giving me all these sword intent fragments, isn't it a waste? I'm really not cut out for sword cultivation. To prove his point, he swung his hand, unintentionally wiping out a flock of innocent grazing sheep with a loud boom. Stunned, Li Fei was speechless. He was far stronger than he imagined. Realizing the implications of this newfound strength, he grew anxious about returning to his sect. If his master discovered his power, he'd be forced into sword cultivation, ending his carefree lifestyle. Yi Feng chuckled. Don't thank me, brother Li Fei. This is all part of your destiny. Your sword intent has reached its peak, and you could break through to the sword heart realm at any moment. Recalling how his sect leader, renowned for having the strongest comprehension skills in centuries, took hundreds of years to achieve the sword heart realm, Li Fei nearly broke into tears. If his leader discovered his current capabilities, he'd surely be dissected for study. Though bitter inside, Li Fei could only nod and thank Yi Feng. But he remained puzzled. Why didn't you use them for yourself, Brother Yi? Yi Feng replied with confidence, I'm not a sword cultivator. Why would I need it? Stunned, Li Fei retorted, if you don't need it because you're not a sword cultivator, then neither do I. I'm not one either. Yi Feng then instructed Li Fei to unleash his sword intent. From now on, let's move freely across the second layer of the Heavenly Dao battlefield, he declared, promptly conjuring ten huge Nine Radiance Thunder Lotuses. Witnessing the appearance of the Nine Radiance Thunder Lotuses, Li Fei exclaimed in surprise, This is the exclusive martial art technique of my Thunderclap sect. How do you know it? Brother Yi. Yi Feng, looking puzzled, responded, So you're familiar with this technique? Li Fei remembered it very clearly. Having both lightning and fire spiritual roots, he had struggled for a month trying to learn this technique without success. Yi Feng pondered for a moment. No one in the Star Extreme sect knows of this technique. They assumed it was a high-ranked art I created myself. It seemed that the system's skill database doesn't just have techniques from the Xiantian continent, but from other worlds too. Excited by this revelation, Yi Feng felt even more motivated. He then decided to hunt peak level beasts of the Qi activation realm to complete the system's task of killing a hundred beasts. Together, Yi Feng and Li Fei began to sweep through the second layer of the Heavenly Dao battlefield, collecting numerous resources along the way. Any cultivator they encountered, sensing Li Fei's sword intent and the nine radiance thunder lotuses trailing Yi Feng, avoided them entirely. No no one dared challenge them, fearing they'd be obliterated with a mere gesture. Seeing the fearful expressions of other cultivators around them gave Li Fei an exhilarating feeling. Although he had been to the Heavenly Dao battlefield many times before, none of those experiences had ever been this thrilling. Anyone who dares to disrespect me will face consequences, Li Fei thought. Brother Yi, where are you coming back to the Heavenly Dao battlefield? We should plan to meet up, maybe we'll run into each other again. Yi Feng responded, sure, but the next time I come, I'll be heading to the third battlefield. Hearing this, Li Fei was taken aback. Brother Yi, does that mean you're showing signs of breaking through? Are you planning to directly advance to the merging spirit realm once you're back? Signs of breaking through? What's that? Yi Feng replied smugly. Either I don't break through, or I shoot straight to the peak of the merging spirit realm's ninth level. Changing the topic, let's not dwell on that. The five beasts of the Qi activation realm's ninth peak level ahead are mine. You can take the rest. Without waiting for a response, Yi Feng directed his nine radiance thunder lotuses towards the beasts. His spiritual energy was unleashed like an unending barrage, bombarding the the creatures one after another like a long-range bomber. The beasts were defeated without even seeing their attacker. Stunned, Li Fei remarked, Brother Yi, at this rate, I won't even get a chance to act. And when he saw Yi Feng conjure another ten thunder lotuses, his astonishment grew. Brother Yi, just how vast is your spiritual sea? Onlookers, noticing that Li Fei didn't use his sword intent or even hold a sword, were baffled. Some speculated that the beasts weren't worthy of his sword play, thinking, who would have thought this chubby guy was so arrogant? One really can't judge a book by its cover. Exasperated, Li Li Fei exclaimed, I'm not a sword cultivator, I only have sword intent. Two days later, Yi Feng had successfully slain a hundred beasts of the Qi activation realm's ninth peak level and earned 5,000 splurge points, bringing his total to just over 10,000. Excitedly, Yi Feng remarked, finally broke 10,000. System, you see how this chubby guy has been running around for me these past two days? I think it's only appropriate to reward him. Giving him 10,000 top grade spiritual stones isn't too much, right? Wanting to splurge since it had been a while, Yi Feng was eager to test it out. 
sort. The system responded that considering the individual possesses the extreme death sort intent, the host's proposed amount was reasonable. At this moment, Li Fei spoke with a hint of reluctance. Brother Yi, I've been in the Heavenly Dao battlefield for almost two months. According to the rules of my sect, I must return to the Heavenly Fire Realm. Your sect has such regulations about time. Yi Feng was somewhat puzzled by this. Li Fei explained, if someone doesn't return after two months, the sect assumes they've died outside. Most sects in various realms have similar rules. Understanding this, Yi Feng didn't insist on Li Fei staying. He then handed over 10,000 top grade spiritual stones to him. You've worked hard these past few days. Take these spiritual stones. We'll meet again if fate allows. With that, he waved goodbye. Watching Yi Feng's departing figure, Li Fei made a fist salute, his expression filled with gratitude. Brother Yi, you are my savior, until our paths cross again. Yi Feng felt a pang of emotion. After spending time together, he was now alone again. Due to his successful splurging, the system rewarded him with 10,000 fragments of death sword intent. Why are you giving me these now that the chubby guy has left? Yi Feng lamented. Even if I were to splurge with these system rewards, I won't earn any splurge points. I guess I'll have to use them myself. With that thought, he began integrating the fragments. However, not far from Yi Feng, about a few hundred meters away, a group of cultivators had gathered. Seeing that the chubby sword cultivator was gone, they started to harbor ill intentions towards Yi Feng. Coupled with the fact that Yi Feng hadn't been seen replenishing his spiritual energy for days, they assumed that he was out of energy. A young man with white hair, displaying a sinister expression, proposed to the gathered cultivators, regardless of which realm's genius he hails from, many of us are ordinary cultivators. Now we have a golden opportunity to slay such a genius. Would you truly want to miss it? The gathered crowd felt a jolt of excitement. An opportunity to kill a prodigy like Yi Feng was tempting. Denying any interest would be a lie. In a decisive tone, the white-haired young man questioned, to kill or not to kill, this opportunity won't present itself again. When the crowd heard the words of the white-haired youth, excitement was evident on their faces as they made their decision. As hundreds of cultivators charged toward him, Yi Feng wasn't surprised. On the contrary, he felt they took their time. By now, he had already integrated all the sword intent fragments. It was a perfect time to demonstrate the ultimate sword intent. Yi Feng began stretching, puzzling the attackers. But in the next instant, an overwhelming sword intent emanated from Yi Feng, with the terrifying aura of death sweeping around. As this suffocating death aura enveloped them, fear painted every face. They realized he had sword intent. Everyone wanted to flee, but the oppressive aura paralyzed them, leaving them without the will to fight back. The white-haired youth was dumbfounded and began to regret his decision. Do you wish to kill me? Yi Feng's voice, cold and detached, pierced the silence. Behind him, a series of nine radiance thunder lotus flowers began forming. Although the white-haired youth attempted to rally his troops, he was met with scorn from his allies. Soon, hundreds of thunder lotus flowers gathered around Yi Feng. It's too late to run now, said Yi Feng with a chilling tone. Then, under the fearful gazes of the attackers, the thunder lotus flowers struck. In that moment, Yi Feng was like a god, an unstoppable force. Looking at the bodies strewn across the ground, he didn't show much emotion. This was the fantastical world he knew. He might be a spendthrift, but he certainly wasn't a saint. If they were enemies, then death was their fate. Dragon Fist, are you from the mysterious heaven realm? As Yi Feng was about to leave, a youthful voice halted him. Turning, he asked who she was. A cute-looking little girl came into view. My name is Luo Yao Yao from the Ten Thousand Flower Valley. You seem to have a hard fight just now. The little girl giggled. Yet, yeah. Yi Feng's response was simply, never heard of it. Luo Yao Yao huffed. Are you really from the mysterious heaven realm? Which insignificant sect do you belong to? And you didn't even mention your name, whereas I told you mine. Yi Feng didn't feel like entertaining her antics. Why should I tell you anything? He retorted, then turned to leave. However, Luo Yao Yao seemed determined to follow him, bombarding him with questions. Could it be that you're an independent cultivator without a sect? What are you looking for in the heavenly Dao battlefield? You can ask me. I might know something. She kept chattering. In warning, Yi Feng snapped. If you don't leave, I'll have to kill you. Yet Luo Yao Yao remained undeterred and brimming with confidence. I am at the peak of the original spirit realm's ninth level, but I've suppressed my cultivation using a secret treasure. If you lay a hand on me, dear average brother, you'll die. Yi Feng was taken aback by her claim. He discreetly inquired from his system, is what this little girl saying true? Is there really a treasure that can deceive the heavenly Dao battlefield? The system swiftly replied, confirming her statement and pointing out the treasure as the purple hairpin on her head. Yi Feng's surprise was evident. How old is she? To have the cultivation of the original spirit realm's ninth level peak at her age. She's as strong as my master, Luo Chenxue. After pondering for a while, he introduced himself. I'm Yi Feng from the Star Soul Sect. Now that you know what you wanted, stop bothering me. Luo Yao Yao giggled in response. Never heard of it. What kind of average sect is that? But your name does sound nice. Actually, I was just trying to scare you earlier. I don't really have the original spirit realm's ninth level peak cultivation. Yi Feng felt exasperated. Not again, he thought. Looking back at her, he challenged. If you're telling the truth, throw away the hairpin. Upon hearing Yi Feng's words, Luo Yao Yao's expression changed. How did he figure out about the hairpin? It never slipped off, nor did it 
leak any spiritual energy. Perhaps I've underestimated him, she thought. I've never heard of the Star Soul sect you mentioned, so it must be some minor sect. I was actually interested in your talent and wanted you to join the Star Extreme sect. You've heard of Star Extreme sect, right? Yi Feng paused upon hearing this. As Luo Yao Yao continued to make her proposition, she said, if you switch to Star Extreme sect, I can assure you'll become a core disciple. She had her own calculations. The man in front of her had a four-element spiritual root, an incredibly vast spiritual sea within him, high comprehension skills, and was on the verge of breaking into the Sword Heart realm. In the future, he might even rank in the top three of a hidden dragon list. She believed he was too valuable a talent to let go. Yi Feng, connecting some dots, suddenly asked, do you know Luo Chinchua? At this, Luo Yao Yao looked surprised. You know my sister? Meanwhile, far away at Star Soul Sect, Luo Chinchua sneezed. Why do I feel like someone's talking about me today? Both Yi Feng and Luo Yao Yao were taken aback by the sudden revelation, and exasperated oh my god, escaped Yi Feng's lips. If Luo Chinchua is my master, then doesn't that make you my junior master? You're my sister's disciple? So, Star Soul Sect is a sect founded by my sister, not just Yi Feng, but even Luo Yao Yao was flabbergasted. Ten minutes later, after Yi Feng explained the situation, Luo Yao Yao was astounded once more. How can someone be my sister's personal core disciple, and also a core disciple, an honorary elder of Star Extreme Sect? Should I call you Junior or Elder Yi? Yi Feng chuckled mischievously. Let's stick to our own terms. I'll call you Junior Master, and you call me Elder. I don't want to, protested Luo Yao Yao. Ignoring her protest, Yi Feng cheekily advanced and said, Junior Master, let this elder pinch your cheeks. Seeing the fiery look in her eyes, Yi Feng felt quite satisfied. He pondered over what to gift his Junior Master on their first meeting. Giving spiritual stones seemed too plain. While the enlightenment pill was an option, it felt too casual, like giving candy. Should he gift the gold and silkworm star shining stone, or the nine leaf soul returning herb, or perhaps the essence blood of the purple thunder mad lion? Recalling the treasures he possessed, Yi Feng looked at Luo Yao Yao and asked directly, Junior Master, are you a body cultivator? Yes, I am. How did you find out? Surprised. It seemed to her that Yi Feng had a knack for uncovering her secrets. Just wait, she threatened. I'll tell my sister about this and get justice. However, her words trailed off when she saw the beast essence blood in Yi Feng's hand, emitting a powerful aura. Her eyes, usually lively as if they could speak, were now fixated on the essence blood. Yi Feng explained that it was the essence blood of the purple thunder mad lion great demon fairy, which had endured nine heavenly Tao thunder tribulations. He originally intended to give her a drop in exchange for pinching her cheek, but seeing her reluctance, he decided against it. Before he could finish his words, Luo Yao Yao dashed over to him at top speed, grabbed his hand, and placed it on her cheek herself. Yi Feng couldn't help but laugh at her adorable expression. He handed over the great demon fairy blood to her. He then started pondering again. If his junior master is a body cultivator, could she also be a refining master? This quirky junior master might be a handful. If he didn't handle her properly now, he might find himself in big trouble in the future. Upon thinking, Yi Feng clumsily dropped a golden silkworm star shining stone on the ground. Just as he anticipated, this action caught Luo Yao Yao's attention. Her astonishment was evident when she saw the star shining stone. Recognizing her familiarity, Yi Feng asked, Junior Master, do you recognize this? She quickly nodded, affirming her knowledge. Sensing an opportunity, Yi Feng teased, do you want it? Luo Yao Yao's head bobbed up and down rapidly, showing her keen interest. However, in a playful manner, Yi Feng swiftly stashed the star shining stone back into his system space and cheekily grinned, saying, I'm not giving it to you. With feigned indignation, she started pounding on his chest. But Yi Feng overlooked a critical point. This little girl was a body cultivator. Those seemingly playful punches soon left him coughing up blood, looking as if he had lost the will to live. Baffled, Luo Yao Yao asked, How did someone with your mediocre strength become my sister's direct disciple? And how did you get to be an honorary elder? Putting on an ostentatious display, Yi Feng replied, Because I'm rich. I paid 500,000 high-quality spiritual stones to your sister for the title of her direct disciple, and I spent 100 million top-grade spiritual crystals plus the secret manual of the Nine Star Sword Formation to buy the title of honorary elder from the sect. Hearing this, Luo Yao Yao wondered if her ears were playing tricks on her. You can buy these titles? Just as they were talking, a disdainful voice rang out from nearby. Ridiculous. Have you ever even seen a top-grade spiritual crystal? You speak of a hundred million top-grade spiritual crystals so casually. Do you even comprehend the gravity of such a number? It was Hua Yuman, the Valley Master of 10,000 Flower Valley. Seeing Yi Feng's flippant demeanor, she threw out a contract, challenging, if you can produce a hundred million top-grade spiritual crystals right now, this Valley Master will take you as her master on the spot. How about adding another esteemed title to your name? Witnessing the tense situation, Luo Yao Yao quickly stepped in to clarify, Elder Yi, my master dislikes people who exaggerate. Don't take it personally, she means no harm. And master, why are you bringing out the contract again? Stop causing a scene. Why human retorted, I just can't stand his bragging. And Luo Yao Yao, open your eyes wide. Don't let these jerks fool you. Caught in a bind, Luo Yao Yao tried to mediate. Master, 
He is the honorary elder of my star extreme sect. Please don't berate him any further. Ignoring her plea, Huaman Yu persisted. What if he's an honorary elder? I still need to keep him in check. Yi Feng's expression grew increasingly stern under Hua Yuman's relentless assault. Turning to Luo Yao Yao, he said, Junior Master, your master is being exceedingly overbearing. I cannot take this disrespect. With that, he produced a spatial ring filled with a hundred million top grade spiritual crystals and threw it at Hua Yuman. With a cold smirk, he added, Good disciple, consider these a hundred million top grade spiritual crystals as a gift for our first meeting. With a scoff, Hua Yuman retorted, I'd like to see how you're going to pretend. She began examining the contents of the spatial ring. At the same time, Yi Feng's face slapping maneuver was deemed successful, earning him rewards. 10 golden silkworm star shining stones, 100 drops of purple thunder mad lion essence blood, and 5 sword heart advancement fragments. Yi Feng was somewhat taken aback. So there are rewards for showing off and face slapping? It seems the system has many hidden features I haven't discovered. As Huaman Yu inspected the spatial ring and saw the vast number of top grade spiritual crystals, she was left dumbfounded. However, Yi Feng wasn't done showing off yet. Don't think I only have those measly spiritual crystals. After that, Yi Feng took out the star shining stone, great demon fairy blood, nine leaf soul returning herb, sword heart advancement fragment, and more, leaving the master disciple pair completely stunned. Furthermore, Yi Feng started utilizing them right away. This item is called sword heart advancement fragment. If your sword intent comprehension reaches its peak by absorbing the power within, you can break through directly to the sword heart realm. Saying this, he merged the fragment into his body. In an instant, an overwhelming sword intent erupted, signifying the formation of the sword heart realm. Witnessing this, disbelief filled Hua Yuman's eyes. Eventually, she admitted defeat and became Yi Feng's disciple. However, she clarified that this only represented her personally and didn't involve the 10,000 Flower Valley. Luo Yao Yao was utterly baffled by now. How did my master get connected with Yi Feng? If Yi Feng becomes my master's master, wouldn't that make him my grandmaster? Hua Yu promptly offered the contract and respectfully greeted Yi Feng as her new master. At this point, Yi Feng received system rewards for gaining a new disciple, 100 strands of ghost enchantment grass, 100 branches of withered soul twig, 100 blooms of five poisons fragrance flower, and 100 portions of soul burning bamboo water. Soon after, the system reminded him, you should pass down the excellent tradition of spending lavishly to your disciples. Based on how much your disciples splurge, the system will grant rewards. Seeing this, Yi Feng smirked, I didn't expect there to be rewards for taking in disciples, and there are even rewards when the disciples spend lavishly, then I should gather more disciples in the future to benefit from their spendings. Indeed, the system has many hidden features.